Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Grace Lewis. I am a principal researcher in the Advanced Mobile Systems Initiative, part of the Software Solutions Directorate. Uh, I've been here for 15 years, uh, since everybody's giving their, their data, even though I know it doesn't look like it. Um, <laughs> so um, Edge Enabled Tactical Systems uh, really focuses on, on small tactical units. Like Matt said, we are out there looking for emerging technology, cutting edge technology that we can uh, leverage in, in systems that can support people operating at the edge, whether those people are military personnel, they're first responders, but people that really need better situational awareness and need better information to make decisions. In FY15, this is a multi-year project, we focus on assurance in, in three different forms. Uh, the first form is, we call it trusted nodes, which is how do, how do you establish trust, trusted identities in fully disconnected environments. The, the second and third area of, uh, second and third area of assurance have to do with confidence and information. How do we derive confidence? So how do we calculate confidence in data that is coming uh, from social media is the, is the first one. And the second one is how do we gain confidence and information when you fuse that social data with physical sensor data? Um, like I said, this is a multi-year project. It builds on our, on our prior results. Uh, we have implemented those are working, working prototypes that if you visit us on Friday at the demo session, you'll be able to see. We have a working prototype in an area called tactical cloudlets. Um, you can think of these as data, mini data centers or micro data centers at the edge. Uh, and the idea is to enable mobile devices to be able to use these to offload computation and also to stage data that is needed for a mission. Our second um, prototype is called Edge Analytics. And this is an infrastructure that allows near real-time analysis of very fast uh, data streams, such as, such as social, uh, social media or specifically Twitter. And finally, information superiority to the edge is our prototype it, that is a combination of a framework uh, and a data model and also a rules engine that allows uh, groups of people deployed in a, in a mission to share contextual information and to use that contextual information to make better decisions uh, for, the, for the better of the, of the group, for resource optimization, and also to make sure that the right information is, is delivered to the right person at the right time. Um, FY15 results in accomplishments. We've been, we've been very, very fortunate uh, this year. We have a very, a very good team. Um, like, like I said, we, we try to, to, get our, to get our stuff out there, I think is the best way to say it. Um, we, um, ed, the Edge Analytics system um, has been successfully used uh, supporting uh, several events, uh, supporting public safety. These are first, uh, first responders. We actually recently uh, supported the, uh, the visit of Pope Francis to, to Philadelphia. We were analyzing uh, Twitter data related to his visit. Um, we have been able to integrate Edge Analytics with uh, MIT um, LL, uh, Lincoln Labs uh, NIC system. We have also done some experimentation with something called the Group Context Framework, and I will talk about that when I talk about the the third task. Um, ICE and DTN, uh, we've, al we've also done work in de uh, delay tolerant networking. We were able to integrate this, this work with uh, PRC-17G radios for the US Marine Corps. Um, everything that we have learned in EATS over this time has, is being applied to a project uh, called TALUS, Tactical Assault Light Operator Suit. I am acronym impaired, but I think I got it right. Um, which has also been called the Iron Man suit. Um, we have a group of people that are, uh, that are working on this project and being able to apply everything that we've learned. And finally, um, the tactical cloudlet system uh, was released uh, this year as open source as part of the SEI uh, presence on, on Git, GitHub uh, as, as KD Cloudlets. And we also have a number of uh, publications in this area. Oh, I can use this. So as I said, task one is about establishing uh, trusted identities in disconnected environments. The problem that you know at the edge is that you don't, you don't you're disconnected. You don't necessarily have a way of verifying credentials when you're, when you're disconnected. Um, also, certificate management becomes a challenge when you're operating in disconnected environments at the edge. So what we set out to do in this task was, can we create a solution that is, that is just as good as, I would say, the traditional CAC environment, um, but th that allows me to operate in, in disconnected environments such that I can generate and exchange credentials uh, in the field. So what we did was, the first thing we did was we developed a threat model, a threat model for, for disconnected edge environments using uh, Microsoft's SDL tool, the stride, the stride model that Rick uh, Kaysman talked about. 
Uh, with that threat model, uh, we investigated what are people doing out there to, uh, to establish trusted identities, and we, and we compared um, those, those solutions against the threat model. We identified uh, two uh, mechanisms, or two algorithms, I could say mechanisms, um, that would support what we wanted to do. Um, and then we implemented that solution in the context of our tactical cloud infrastructure, which is an example of a, of a disconnected system. And we are currently in the process of, evalu of evaluation where we've already evaluated against the threat model and it's, it's, looking, it's looking pretty good. Uh, and we're currently uh, conducting vulnerability analyses. I should say that this is a task that we're doing in conjunction with, with CERT, of course. So the idea, like I said before, is that when you have a tactical cloud that which you can imagine deployed in, in a tent or somewhere in the field, um, if you're a, um, I should have said tactical cloudless are discoverable, they're meant to be discoverable. So um, if I am a soldier and I see a tactical cloudlet, I want to make sure that it's a good one, it's a trusted one. On the other hand, if a tactical cloudlet sees somebody trying to use it, they want to make sure that that person is a, is a trusted person. So what we've done is we've created a four-step process um, that involves a, a bootstrapping stage where basically what we do in the, what we do in the cloudlet is that we, uh, we generate credentials for the server using something called IDE. ID stands for identity-based encryption, and it's a technology that was developed at Stanford many years ago, and is used as, uh, particularly in the context of secure email. So what we've done is we're using it in a completely different, a completely different context. And using IB, we generate server credentials, and we set up a radius server, which is what we use for Wi-Fi authentication. In the second step, which is the pairing process, what I use is a combination of IB as well to generate the device credentials, but I also use out-of-band channels, like physical visual confirmation, and also a connection of the mobile device to the, to the cloudlet, um, either via USB, which I know is not allowed in many, in many cases, but also via Bluetooth. So we have an out-of-band channel to, to do that exchange. And at that moment, the device credentials are also exchanged with the a, with a, with a radius server for the Wi-Fi authentication step, which in this case is basically uh, certifying the, uh, the router, that the router is a good router, which is what I'm going to use to communicate with the cloudlet. And finally, after that, because I've securely exchanged keys, um, now I can, ha I can manage API requests. In, com in conjunction with that, there are two, uh, two other strategies for termination, which is automatic due to, uh, due to timeout. In the bootstrapping stage, what we do is we, we set a, uh, like a missing length, and basically after that, any, anything, anything else is, 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 is revoked, is, is, um, you can't do it anymore. Or also manual. If, uh, if, we, if we see that a device is, is compromised or lost, we can also um, deactivate uh, mobile devices. Keep going back to this. Um, this is uh, the evaluation against the threat model. Uh, we identified 14 uh, top threats using the, the threat model, and uh, we fully addressed by Empire implementation. We have five of those, partially addressed one of them, and it's a usability uh, trade off. Um, I can get into details at the poster session, or not right now. And two, not, a, not addressed by our implementation at all, and six others that are addressed outside of our implementation that really don't have to do with the, uh, with the mechanisms that we established, but are, are done through controls. Um, on, the, on the server as well as, as the environment. The second task is assigning credibility scores to social media streams in, in real time. So one of the problems, the benefits and the curse of social media is that anybody can tweet, right? I can tweet anything, I can t what I tweet doesn't necessarily have to be true, it could, could be false. Um, and so what we're trying to do is, is there a way to establish confidence in information? Can I assign a confidence score to information that is coming from, for example, from Twitter to say, Yes, this, I believe this is true, and, and, and this is why I believe it's true. And so tasks that we set out to do are the, 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 the typical uh, research tasks. We did a literature review. We looked at different algorithms. Um, and what we're doing right now, actually, let, let me just show you the next slide. So we've, de we've developed something that we're calling the credibility calculation pipeline. So the idea is, this two screen thing is a problem, isn't it? Um, <laughs> The idea is that on the, on the, far, on the far left, you have a, a data stream, which in this case is Twitter, and you have a user query. A user qu is, is such and such shooting real? Is, is this event real? Is this really happening? So basically, that's the user query. And then there's an initial filter stream. So what we do with the f in the filter stream is that we try to take out noise and spam. So, we, so when we do feature extraction, we really, we're li really focusing on the tweets that are, that are indeed related to that. And then we put it through a, a, calc uh, a calculate score step that also leverages uh, fact databases and rumor, uh, rumor corpuses. And what we, um, what we do at the end, and I think the, the second part is what is unique, is that not only are we able to generate a credibility score, but we're also able to provide a chain of reasoning that, this, that says, 
we arrived at this conclusion, and this is why, so that the human can then make the decision, do I trust this information based, based on what I'm seeing? However, it's not as rosy as it looks in this picture, because we are stuck at filter stream, which is the second step. That proved to be a lot more difficult than we had originally envisioned. And that's why we, it's a multi-year project and we're continuing it. So we first started with a rule-based um, rule approach. And that, unfortunately, it did not scale. The rules became very specific, very domain specific. And also, if you're thinking about this in the field, it's every time you're going to train it for a new domain or apply, sorry, apply it to a new domain, you would have to write a, a, a set of rules such as the, right, uh, the ones on the right. So challenges, um, just balancing specificity and generality, um, just the, how involved the, the rule creation process is, and also the characteristics of Twitter data. Twitter doesn't have spell checkers. Twitter uses a lot of slang, a lot of acronyms, a lot of those, what is, LOL, what is that? That's, there's a word for that. There's, it's a, a, what is it? Yeah, no, I know what it is, but the, the, but it, <laughs> the name of those things, anyway. But, but it uses a lot of that. And so what happened is that we, we ended up creating more and more and more rules. So we said, okay, we have to, this rule approach is not gonna work. It might work in, in, in a more structured environment like health, but it's definitely not gonna work with, with Twitter data. So what we've moved on is to more of a, a more traditional machine, uh, machine learning approach where we look, we've, we've looked at different algorithms and the one that is showing the best results is, is linear SVC or in particular SVM. So the chart at the bottom, um, what you wanna do is you wanna maximize that, that area under the curve, that's, that's your target. If you're right down the middle, um, I don't know if you can see the labels, but once are the, on the bottom it says false positive and on the, on the side it says true positive. But basically if you're down the middle, that's, you don't wanna be there because basically that means you're guessing. You wanna, you wanna be above that curve. And so this is what is, the SVM is looking really, really good. So this is, a, a, on the left side, is, it's the training test with the original data set. Of course, it matched pretty well. Then we fed it brand new data, and it's not perfect, but it looks good. But what we like, what we like the most about SVM is if you look on the right, if you retrain it with that data that came in, it quickly adapts again. So it shows a lot, a lot of potential, especially as we look into FY16 work, which I'm gonna to talk to in a second. And the third, the third um, task has to do with fusion of, of social and physical sensor data. The problem is that fusion at the edge is very manual. It's very time consuming. It takes a lot of time. So what we want to do is we want to create a fusion strategy where, for example, we can, we can fuse the stuff, for example, that is coming from the edge analytics system, the Twitter data, with physical sensor data to provide even more confidence and information. So what we did in, what we did in this case, actually, let me just show you the next slide. So we built, um, we call this our fusion architecture. So the, uh, the, the system on the left is the edge analytics system that, that I just talked about. Basically, it's a system that is analyzing um, Twitter data in real time and is producing things such as alerts, um, sentiment analysis, um, geo-inferencing, all those, all those things. Um, on the bottom in the yellow is ICE. ICE, like I said before, it's our, it's our, um, our event-based uh, context uh, sharing uh, framework. And what is on the right is work that we're doing in conjunction with, uh, with uh, an in-day at the, at the HCI, uh, Human Computer Interaction Institute. And it's a more opportunistic framework. So the idea behind GCF is be, through, a, through an opt-in model, being able to test sensors. So for example, actually let me go to the next example. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is we're trying to fuse what we call cooperative context. So the group context framework is, is more about tasking. So it's an opt-in method where I can, where where um, we, ha we have to think about the business model, but the idea is, can I task sensors on a mobile device when something is happening? So imagine, uh, imagine Edge Analytics saying, it seems to me that there is a shooting in this area. If I have, if I have mobile phones equipped with GCF, I can, I can automatically turn on their sensors and say, can you capture audio for me, for example? Can you capture different things? So the idea is to be, be able to cue um, the data capture uh, through sensors on the, on the mobile devices using, using GCF. And so we see a lot of interaction there between edge analytics, between ICE itself. So ICE would, for example, share events. And so being able to combine events from ICE with opportunistic context from GCS and, and ideally also information from coming from edge analytics. So this would be a, a, the, a, a really ideal scenario for that task. Uh, we did some experiments. We, um, we, we recently uh, did some experiments at Creation Fest. I don't know if you've ever heard about that. But it's the largest Christian music festival in the world. And it happens in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania. And, uh, and we, we were there. 
Uh, and uh, and that the idea, um, and we did an experiment where basically uh, a group of people were, were, were given these GCF uh, mobile devices, and uh, thr through obviously through simulated events, they were tasked at particular times and were able to, to collect data. So we were, the, the good news is that we were able to test the architecture, the architecture that I showed you, the, the colored picture, it, it works really well. Um, unfortunately, the data that we captured was not extremely good. For example, one of the problems that we had is that when the, when the volunteers, because they were volunteers, were given the mobile devices, they put them in their phone, in their pocket. And so there is a lot of pocket noise. And so, yeah, lessons learned. And so the data wasn't that good, but we were able to, we were able to make uh, good progress. So as you can see, the, the, the blessing and the, and the curse of EATS is that the scope has grown so much because there's so much to do in this area that for FY16, we're actually dividing into two projects. We're dividing into uh, tactical computing communications, which is going to be the cloudlet work in combination with the DTN work, basically. And the tactical analytics work is going to be the edge analytics work as well as the, as the, as the, sensor, as the sensor fusion work. And actually, um, in the technical analytics uh, area, we have uh, two brand new lens projects that have just started. And the idea is to be able to feed those results into, into edge analytics as well. Um, that's it. This is, this is our team. Uh, we have a very good team, a very good set of collaborators, um, some key engaged stakeholders, and we, we want to continue making, making progress in this area. Thank you very much.